The talking, nagging, lucha watching, puro viewing, indie supporting, drinking, cursing, son of a gun of a podcast. Join former pro wrestler and promoter Dave Dynasty and co-host Ike Isaacs as they talk wrestling and interview those within the business. Bringing positivity back to pro wrestling. This is the Dave Dynasty Show. And welcome to the Dave Dynasty Show. I'm your host, Dave Dynasty. Uh, back after a little break in the action, but, uh, th- you know, things are weird, right? I mean, we're all quarantined in. We're all staying at home as much as possible. We're all trying to be safe. And, and I'm just, here I am. I'm going to check in, see how you're doing. Uh, we might be a little bit sporadic with our podcast releases over the next few weeks. I know it's easy to think. Uh, staying home more, I should have more time to do this, but I am now working from home and there are other things obviously going on and, and I, you know, so I'm going to do what I can to get you some content out there, to get you some things, uh, to, to help entertain you, whether it be podcast, whether it be on Facebook or on Twitter or on our YouTube channel, I have lots of things that I want to share and hopefully help you in this time. And I do hope you're doing well. Um, I hope you're being smart. I hope you're being safe. I hope you're staying home as much as possible. And and if you do have to go out, I hope you're being smart with the social distancing and with the washing of hands and all these type of things. I hope that everyone in their in their employment status is doing okay. I know these are hard times for a lot of people. I'm fortunate that I am able to continue to work from home. And uh, you know, I hope I know there's lots of things, you know, it, it's hard sometimes to go out when you do get to go out to do even find groceries and things like that. And I, and I hope you're all doing well in that time. If any of you, I, I know sometimes things like these can really ride hard on a person, right? And, and there are things about this, especially if you have friends or family that are, that are sick, that are being directly affected by this. Um, and if, you know, it can be depressing. And if you need someone to talk to, reach out to me on Facebook. And I am always here to lend an ear but do be smart and be safe because remember, it's not just about you not getting sick. It's about you not passing it on to others, to the high risk people. Uh, my wife has a lot of health issues and, uh, you know, in a, in a compromised immune system because of some of these things. And she's, she's diabetic, which makes her very high risk. So while I, I don't have many fears about myself being sick and what would happen to me, I, my concern, primary concern. Is, is getting it and passing it to her. And that should be yours too, because it may not affect you at all. It may not, af- it may affect you only a little, but you may pass it on to someone who's elderly or someone who has a compromised immune system or another illness, and it will affect them. And, and let's take this serious and let's be smart. And, um, and let's, let's do this together, right? One thing I would like to help you practice is there's a lot of independent creators out there, such as myself, who are trying to do things for you and really could use your support. And there are guys out there, and we're talking here professional wrestling, right? This is a professional wrestling podcast. A lot of wrestlers, actually, I'll be, I'm assuming all wrestlers should be, are, are losing their bookings, right? Because they're not able to have these shows, especially some of the these guys that are losing these WrestleMania weekends and the promotions that are losing their WrestleMania weekend shows. These are the things that set them up big time for the year. So continue to be supportive of the wrestlers and, and of the promotions that you enjoy and that you like. You know, if they have a streaming service, make sure you subscribe if you don't already, you know, just, just to help them out. If they sell merchandise and t-shirts by mail, you know, go buy one and help them out during this time. And, um, and don't be judgmental if any of these guys right now uh, have a GoFundMe or a Patreon out there. because they're, they're trying to make it right. And, and it's, they're in a situation that's not caused by their themselves. You know, they, their income has been taken away from them. There are lots of these guys nowadays who are full-time professional wrestlers. And when something like this happens, it's out of their hands, right? Their income is gone. And it's not like in this time they can go out and just find another job to help supplement and get them through there. That's, that's not an option right now. So do, do be concerned about that and be and be compassionate and help them out and, and throw them a few bucks for the things that they do and they need and, and help them out. Order some shirts, order some DVDs, order some pictures, 
uh, subscribe to some streaming services, hit up the Patreon accounts and the GoFundMe. You know, if you're the one of the fortunate ones who are continuing to work and, and don't have the income issues, help them out. You know, I've I've tried to do a few things. I've ordered a few things from some of my favorite guys out there. Uh, I have subscribed to a couple other streaming services that I don't usually do, and and you know, and it's just to try to help, right? And and, and let's. And, and this goes for lots of things. I'm also a comic book fan, and uh, this is really hitting that hard too. And and I've I, you know I've done that. You know, there's there's things out there where you can support, where you can order drawings and prints from some of your favorite artists and different things like that. And and then of course small businesses in your area. Uh, this guys, this is going to there is obviously the health ramifications of this, but this is so beyond that because. There are lots of other impacts to this. This is this is going to ruin some small businesses. So try to help that, right? Just think about the, the, the local businesses that you go to, that you enjoy uh, shopping at or, or, or dining at. And they may not make it through this if we don't step up and help, right? Order some carry-out food from your favorite restaurant. There, most of them, while they can't do dine-in, are still doing drive-through or uh, uh, delivery or, or you know pickup. Do that. Help them out. Uh, maybe a little more than you usually do if you're able to. Uh, lots of businesses are doing, you know, call ahead pickup where you can order. They will bring it out to you when you get there. Do that, right? And, or if they do an online thing by any chance, I know, like I said, I'm a comic book fan. A lot of comic shops are really trying to step up their eBay and, and things like that. Buy from them and, and let's try to support them. Let's try to get them through this and help them through so that they can still be there on the other side. Uh, I, I, you know, I, this is, you know, we always talk about, I talk about my, my crew out there, my, my, my Midwest Express, my diehards. Let's, let's, this is a call to arms, guys. Let's really get out there and try to help these things. And, and, and I'm, obviously I'm talking within professional wrestling, but I'm talking also outside that. Be a member of your community and let's help these businesses through. But let's now move on here. Uh, I've said my piece on this for now, so I, I, I do hope you're listening. I hope you take it to heart. But we do have an episode for you today. We had a couple things that I had sitting, uh, and I apologize that it's been a while. Like I said, uh, we have Dewey Wellington on, a young professional wrestler from the Midwest, and I apologize to Dewey. We've had this interview in the in the can for a few weeks, and like I said, because of all these circumstances and everything going on, I just haven't been able to get it out there. I do apologize. The interview does have some quality issues and some recording issues. It's one of those things. Sometimes when Ike records, it happens. The connection is not always there, uh, and, and and it is what it is. And, and but I'm always very adamant about let's still put the content out there. Let's still put it out there because I, there is there is worth in it, even despite some of the audio issues. So we have that interview with Dewey Wellington, and today I'm also going to uh, put some classic audio on. Uh, it's from 1980. Uh, it's a it's a a Memphis TV show a promo and interview with uh, Dennis Condry and David Schultz. This is a great, great interview. If you guys follow me on Facebook uh, and on YouTube or on Twitter, which I hope you do. And I don't know why you don't. Uh, we got the upcoming thing, a little commercial. that's going to tell you how you can do that. But I put the video out there of this and it is great. I love it. I could, I could listen to David Schultz and Dennis Condry all day long. Now, some of you have also asked me online, well, where does the Dave Dynasty show stand, right? I, I, I reached out and said, what kinds of things would you do? Because we kind of hit a plateau, right? We're still we're, we're still fairly strong on our listeners and in our followers, but I want more, right? I want more interaction. I, I, I obviously want more of an increase than what we have. And I'm not, it's not a greedy thing. It's nothing like that. It's just, obviously, yeah, with this show, I wanted to continue to grow in the listenership and the followership. I want it to grow with our interactions online and, and with my posts. And one thing a lot of you reached out to me and said was, maybe you should branch out a little bit from the Midwest. There's there's other stuff out there. Maybe you should do that. And now, that does not mean I'm going to do the standard. Uh, I'm not going to do Raw reviews and SmackDown reviews and blah, 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 you know, match by match, second by second. I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do, and, and still, we will have a very, very strong Midwest wrestling presence. That's never going to change on this show. But I am going to have other stuff, right? I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to branch out, and I'm going to branch out to basically the stuff that I enjoy, right? It's going to be real professional wrestling. It's going to be good professional wrestling, at least what I deem is good. 
and you know, like the Memphis clip today, I you know, it there there it will be primarily old school wrestling, but I might discuss some aspects of modern wrestling that I enjoy. I I, I fully enjoy the new NWA product that is out there. There are other things that I enjoy pieces and elements, right? I do enjoy parts of AEW. I absolutely hate parts of AEW. There are parts of WWE that I do like. I absolutely hate a lot of WWE. So, I will discuss the parts I like, and I will probably put down the parts I don't like. I'm going to be very blunt and very forward about this, and I I, I do think most of my followers and my listeners uh, will agree with me on these things. But if not, like I said, I urge you to go online on one of my social media platforms and let's have a discussion, right? But let's be respectful about it. Let's, let's, we can talk, we can debate. We all love professional wrestling. That's, you know, if you wouldn't be listening, you would not be following me if you didn't. So let's have, let's have adult conversations about this and let's discuss these things. Now, so let's talk about some things recently that I do like, right? We do know that right now professional wrestling, the, the live events are, are not happening. And we do know the television programs, they're doing all these empty arena things. And I don't like the empty arena stuff. It is, to me, it's boring. It takes away the prime element of professional wrestling. That is the crowd and the interaction. I'm not a fan. I think AEW, the first week they did it, by having other wrestlers out in the crowd, I thought it was very good. I, there was some give and take. There was some response. There was some feedback between those guys and the people in the ring. It was very good. Now, this is no sign on the in-ring product. But the without the fans there, I just do not enjoy it. And, and I'm, I, I'll be so glad when this element's over. I wish these guys, I wish they would maybe, I don't know, do some more package shows or something because I can't, I can't hardly fathom WWE wrestling anyway, but this MDA stuff, I can't do. Just absolutely cannot do. But one thing, one positive impression of wrestling right now is that we got season two of Dark Side of the Ring that is out there. I'm a huge fan of this show. Loved season one. Um, and so far, Season two is just blowing me away. We've had the two-part uh, look at the Crispin Wall tragedy, the the murder suicide, and those two episodes were phenomenal. I I cried at parts, I laughed at parts, I, I felt so strongly for some of the people involved in this. It is incredible. It was amazing. If you have not seen this, I highly urge you to do it. And then right now, it's very easy to do that. All you have to do is go on YouTube, look up Vice TV. Both parts are on there. It is phenomenal. You have to watch this. It is great. And that is, for this episode, that is my my prime suggestion uh, for the episode is to go watch The Dark Side of the Ring, the two-part Crispin Wall special they did. Now, that's it for right now. That's all I'm going to talk about with what's going on right now because, like I said, there's not a lot happening right now, obviously. Um, WrestleMania is coming up soon. It's going to be recorded. It's, it's I, I, been recorded. Is being recorded. I'm not sure. It's going to be ridiculous. I don't know why they didn't postpone it so that they could still have a crowd. Just wait for whether it's going to be summer, whether it's going to be fall, whether it's going to be whatever. Man, WrestleMania is not WrestleMania without the crowd interaction. It's not with WrestleMania without the big uh, entrances and things. And this is going to be a sham and a joke. And I, do, I, don't, I don't know if there's going to be any enjoyment. I was looking forward to a couple of the matches on there. And I just don't know. I don't know whether I will enjoy it at all in this uh, current uh, way they're doing things. I understand the scenario. I understand what they have to do, but ah, man, I, uh, whatever. Anyway, let's take a break. When we come back, we will have that episode with Dewey Wellington. And then following that next break, we will have the classic audio from Memphis, 1980, from uh, Dennis Connery and David Schultz. So stick around. Hey, make sure you visit DaveDynasty.com. That is your central hub for everything within the world of the Dave Dynasty Show. From there, you can find links to follow us on all of our social media accounts. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube, which you will want to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have lots of classic wrestling, every episode of the podcast, and other exclusive features there. While you're at DaveDynasty.com, check out the links to help financially support the show. That is how we keep this free every week. You can go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash The Dave Dynasty and buy a shirt to help us out. PayPal.me slash The Dave Dynasty to make a one-time financial contribution. Patreon.com slash The Dave Dynasty to make ongoing monthly contributions. Or you can click our affiliate links for Amazon.com and HighSpots.com. No additional charge to you, but it helps us out. Thank you for your support and check out DaveDynasty.com. 
complete your experience. The Dave Dynasty Show. Since 2001, drug companies dumped a billion opioid pills in West Virginia, causing over 3,000 overdose deaths and thousands of babies born addicted by no fault of their own. I'm attorney Stephen New. If you're the grandparent or guardian of a child born with neonatal abstinence syndrome, call me. I'll help you seek just compensation. Call the law offices of Stephen P. New at 1-844-BAD-PILLS before time runs out. And welcome back to the Dave Dine Show. I'm your co-host, Ike Isaacs, and today I am joined with Dewey Wellington. How are you doing today, sir? Doing well, doing well. How about yourself? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. Well, dude, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So, first question for you today. All right. uh, where are you from? Well, originally I'm from uh, Lee, and that's where, uh, uh, but I recently moved up to Terrell, Indiana, because it's easier for me. So I've been there up more northern, so yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, you said you grew up in Louisville. Um, what was it like growing up in Louisville? Yes, I did. Yeah. Did you play any sports when you were at um, yeah, I mean, I grew up as a wrestler, 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 wrestler. Uh, so I was trying to just have bonus shows being in the locker room, uh, just being around wrestling. Uh, I actually did do wrestling in really high school. The air was my first year. I can't just say it. I switched over to TLP and did wrestling, but I had to I wanted to see uh, professional wrestling, though, so I ended up doing wrestling on my school team. That time, I kind of wish I would have done high school wrestling. Uh, I still would have wanted to uh, have been able to refine my to professional wrestling. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's actually uh, something I was going to point out. You know, you, you kind of had wrestling uh, around your entire life, but all, you know, uh, working as a, um, like, I guess they, they call it amateur wrestling, but that you do in high school and college, it's a really good um, groundwork for a future in professional wrestling, for sure. Oh, for sure, man, for sure. But with that being said, um, with professional wrestling, like you said, it's kind of been around you your entire life. It's something you've kind of grown up with. Um, with wrestling, what was uh, what are some of your misses about with wrestling? Who were some of your uh, favorite wrestlers? Well, you see, I first wrestler. I don't know something that happened. I was in high school, and a lot of old school TNA. I fell in love with because AJ Mall and all that. They do some the high flying stuff that I really like. First high fighters that I kind of fell in love with. So, uh, yeah, and, uh, Tim Punk, uh, I was a big fan of seeing Punk whenever uh, he was doing his uh, end run with JWD. Um, so, yeah, I kind of just like seeing Punk style as well. And then, uh, now, uh, I like Tim Ballard. He's in New Japan and Hope Prince Devitt, uh, Stick, and I kind of just like the swap. No, absolutely. And I was actually going to say, all of those are really answers, obviously. We can go back as far as, you know, with Booker T. Oh, for sure. Uh, Burger I mean, can't get better than those lifetime promos. I mean, those uh, wrestling promotions ever, man. Uh, well, we're good. Like I said, like, that's really that to me. Is, 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 is different. That, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It was a lot different than the, the environment that he was in at that time. Um, kind of to follow up on that, you know, uh, with great inspirations for, you know, wrestling and all these you know, background with professional wrestling. Um, you know, being a fan from the time that you know you're 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 young and you keep growing up and whatnot. Eventually, you kind of make that next step and you say, "Oh, I want to be a wrestler now." So, at, at what point did you think to yourself, like, "Hey, I want to act really Well, for me, it was in the quarters all my life. Like I said, I'm a second generation wrestler, and I remember being six years old uh, in drills, like, um, which used to be Supreme Championship, but now just Supreme. And Drills that everybody else would run during training, like, uh, I would do, like, jump over the guys when they did the drop game. They would remember just getting in the ring at such a young age. And so, my wife, um, when I was 14, I was able to start to work. And uh, when I was 15, I started refereeing. And I was on. And the importance of training wrestling. And I actually used a lot of stuff that he did teach me. Uh, once I transitioned in my sophomore year. And, uh, and then uh, as I was training uh, in rep, the roundhouse running was kind of trained under a uh, recent split, under two tough Tony, under uh, Rudolph Alamada. So uh, I refined my dad um, 
and was able to uh, branch out after I graduated from there and wrestle into some of the places I've been wrestling. In the debt for pretty much all my life. Oh, for sure. That's what I was going to say. Especially, you know, um, there, there are a lot of people nowadays, especially um, this generation, uh, there are a lot of like second and third generation wrestlers that are um, kind of around your age too that are, you know, popping out of the woodworks and you know, there are a lot of really great folks. So I feel see to see that second generation, you know, take a step into the ring. Um, and, you know, and that's, you know, so if you guys. Hey. Oh, sorry. But, uh, no, I was going to say, you know, you were training with, you know, you named off some really, you know, really. I would say very skilled, very uh, open people to be able to get that trained on. Uh, so the next question for you, you know, with all of that being said, um, what was your what was your first match? My first match uh, was actually, uh, I went out there and a, I'm not actually, a uh, power injury uh, I did. And I dressed up in a more suit and started my first shoot against uh, Chris Chaos. Uh, he was a big man, <laughs> a giant, so kind of, so uh, David and last week, but my first match, I was as nervous as I thought it would be, uh, because like I said, I've been around it all my life, it was just a journey in front of a rock crowd, uh, but uh, being under the mask kind of helped me, uh, in, like, on, and was, allowed me to work on a lot of my mannerisms, uh, being under a hood and a uh, character. No, absolutely, man. Uh, and like you said, that's, uh, that's a lot of people's first match, you know, going out there under a mask, uh, Especially when you know you're you're getting into the business. Um, with all that being, you've been in professional wrestling in one area or another uh, for a good time now. So in, in your mind, uh, with the wrestling and with how exciting and how, and how just a part of being uh, a part of wrestling. Um, well, it is probably uh, the pay pay rate and Hunter is starting. Um, that's probably the worst part. The best part is being able to travel to show, just meet new people. Uh, like I expect, and I love meet new people, meet new fans. And I do a lot of my own merchandise, and so, like, you know, do my merchandise in that way to, uh, and have people buy it and have people interested. And it, 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 it's exciting. Like, it's that good part of wrestling when you're able to like somebody uh, on an emotional level. So I would say that's probably the best part of being a uh, professional wrestler on the independent scene and being able to travel to a bunch of different companies and meet all kinds of different people in all kinds of different walks of life and all. No, absolutely. And that's what I was going to say, you know, and uh, unfortunately, independent wrestling is something that doesn't be the greatest. But, like you said, I, I feel like one of the one is that, you know, I get travel, you, know, you get to see different places, you get a lot of really cool people. Definitely, I've, I've heard that for sure. Um, so, I guess the, the next thing for you, you know, is with having worked um, for a little bit now, uh, you, you obviously have a whole lot of career ahead of you. Um, but right now, you know, what are you uh, working pretty regularly? Um, I'd say, you know, bro, uh, I'm actually now. Uh, New Wave Pro because there's a time where uh, they were the only people around um, me. So it was easier for me to leave Wool and move I wouldn't have to travel that often. But t- and uh, Grindhouse, I still go to Grindhouse to learn, uh, even though I'm not in a Grindhouse e- anymore, I go there uh, to learn how to book a show and how to write a show uh, under my dad. My dad's a writer at Grindhouse. There's Wing. And I also do a lot of production stuff, behind the scenes stuff, and learn how to do all that. Um, there was a point where how to run a switchboard, how to set up cameras, and how to do that stuff at Grindhouse Pro Wrestling. So uh, I, I want to say that they're awesome. Grindhouse Home is much as a home to me. Uh, and I just try to get out try to have substandard homes, if that makes sense. No, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, like you said, you, know, you have those couple places where you're at, but you, know, you work on looking up, you're always trying to find the next one. I, I definitely understand that. Uh, now, let me ask you, you know, with, again, you being such a young wrestler with, you know, you have a lot of a lot of time in front of you, in this, you know, in this business with the, the career that you're in. Um, I guess a good question would be uh, in your future as a professional wrestler. To basically, at what point would you say, you know, I, I have become successful? You know, or do you have any goals that you're kind of looking for? Or maybe that you work. I have a lot of goals and aspirations in the in the world of professional wrestling. To want to be able to go over, uh, across the pond, UK, and be able to wrestle in the UK. Wrestling uh, is surrounded around. Wrestling and amateur style wrestling, and I feel like that that would be real. Cool. Um, and if I could get to a point in my career where I'm able to just live out my house off the rest, um, as far as as future like opponents, like I, there's a lot of people that I can say her name off. I wrestle or the opportunity. Like I really, really like to work. Uh, in the, 
Will Ospreay. Uh, and I'm kind of fishing out, but that's just go over that. That's one guy that I've always said that if I could pick anybody to wrestle, I was going to wrestle Will Ospreay. So. Uh, I've, got to, I've got the privilege to work uh, on the independent circuit, or in a lot of people who are out there. Like, I've got to wrestle with Jacobs three times. I've got to So I've been blessed to be able to be in locker rooms with guys like that, uh, being in locker rooms with guys like Connor and just laying under them. And so, yeah. Absolutely. And like, and like you said, you know, you got a whole lot of career ahead of you, so you'll also have some time to say, you know, hey, here are some more people I want to work with, and I, and I, I feel pretty confident you'll have a lot of people to work with in the future, for sure. Um, so I guess uh, kind of along those same lines, you know, having been, um, work, you know, doing what you've been doing for a time that you've been doing it, um, what do you is like a top highlight for you so far? So you have a lot of time ahead of you, but when you look back at what you've already done, what's one of the what's the highlight of your career in wrestling? Uh, well... A high T, uh, personally, uh, as a sentimental moment, was being able to have a feud with my father uh, and be, being able to be he passed away. And being able to just do a story with him, uh, that, that was very near to my heart. And then, like I said, like, I got to, I've got to do a program with Jimmy Jacobs. And kind of my thing was, hey, I got to wrestle with Jimmy Jacobs three times. Um, and just being able to just, you know, on a weekly basis, uh, I've actually met my girlfriend through the wrestling. Uh, and she, so uh, I guess that that all right for me. So like I could feel like, hey, uh, wrestling is good. I'm just thankful to be able to do what I do. No, absolutely. Uh, no, obviously, it's good that you have a lot. Of, you know, there are a lot of people who probably look back and they're like, yeah, not not so good. But it, it's good to see that you know, you know, somebody's out here actually, you know, living the dream. You know, going through the Right. And to be in wrestling and everything else. That's all. That's great. I'm very glad to hear that, of course. Um, so I guess uh, we're going to take this on a slightly different track. Um, you know, we we talk a lot about wrestling. We talk a lot about what you do in the ring and, you know, how you got trained and uh, all of that. Uh, what, what does Dewey Welling do is uh, his own I know. What, what do you... Well, I'm, I'm so much involved with wrestling. It's like, that's all I need. I know I have my time going to the gym, trying to make sure, like, I have that look, that look, walk walk, talk, talk, and I spend a lot of my time practicing promos doing things like that, making my urge and doing count with my girlfriend. I mean, that's really the idea. Uh, right now, uh, I don't have a shoot job because I'm just trying to spend all my time as much as I can uh, surrounding myself with wrestling, sports training, and stuff like that. No, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, like you said, I mean, wrestling's the world. you got to do a lot to keep up the image. you got a lot to, you know, market yourself and everything else. So, no, I understand. Uh, it is a busy business, that is for sure. Uh, but I guess, you know, one thing for you, we, we, we've talked a lot, you know, what you've passed, basically your path to being a wrestler now, and we've talked a lot about, you know, you know, some of your goals and aspirations for the future. Um, so one last thing, obviously we're, we're about we're getting close to halfway through 2020, or anything that you've got your eyes on this year? Being able to get on a GCW show, a Table Pro show, which is one of those companies that I look at a lot, uh, try to get my name out there, I mean, you know, I always want to make uh, this one stick to the Advent, so in the Pennsylvania or Illinois or out west, so that would be so okay, keep fine. Uh, really, it's, it's it. And hey, they're not off that, you know, like you said, not there, putting your name out there, uh, you know, keep going, find new stuff to do. That's, that's, um, I guess the, the last thing I want to offer out to you is, uh, in, you know, in the world of uh, independent wrestling, social media is so, uh, for all wrestlers. So do you have any uh, social medias where people can follow you and see what you're going to do next? Uh, don't you on uh, Facebook, uh, or uh, oh, and on Twitter and Instagram. Absolutely. Um, so now, for anybody who's listening to the show, who wants to check him out, obviously we'll, we'll include everything, all of his uh, meetings and stuff when we uh, uh, post the episode. So go check him out. Go check him out on his, uh, his, his uh, I should say, social medias. You know, see what he's next. Go catch him at a show. Um, he's going he's gonna to do some great things. So, you know, bump out uh, and see what's next. So, uh, but, Dewey, I want to thank you very much for giving us the time to, to speak this evening and, uh, you know, get to learn a little about you and see what we've been up to. So I really appreciate you coming on the show, of course. Well, thank you for having me. Are you looking for the newest and hottest in the world of pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 6,000 hours of the best events from over 150 of your favorite promotions from 20 different countries around the globe. Brands like Progress Wrestling, Evolve Wrestling, Combat Zone, Defy, PCW Ultra, PWX, Over the Top, Shine, and hundreds of others with fresh content added every day for only $5.99 per month. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv.
Just use promo code DYNASTY. We uh, found lacking in our previous presentations a discussion with David Schultz and Dennis Condry, which we are rectifying today to talk about their future and the picture of the uh, World Tag Team Champions. Lance, you know, we're not dressed out to wrestle today. You know why? Do you know why? The Jarrett and Welch Wrestling Company has got something against Condry and Schultz. When we signed the contract to come in here, Lance, we signed the contract for championship matches. Now, you know Buddy Fuller's down here in these little hick towns running around. Oliver Tennessee. Oliver Tennessee. Wearing his fancy up. suit. Act like up, he's man. somebody. He's come down there and he says, Bill Dundee, Jimmy Valiant, Ricky Morton, all of them. Them are my champions. Them are my boys. You know? And now we ask them why can't we get a championship match? What's wrong? They say, you're too violent. You're too violent. People wrote in and said, you're violent. You're violent. We don't want to see violence. Schultz and Condry's going to put somebody away. Get them off the television. They're too violent. Jerry, Jerry, that little punk. That's what he is. See, I can call him anything I want to call him because I've got a contract, Lance Russell. They can't tear my contract up. You understand? And that's what he is. I asked him, I say, Jerry, Jerry, what about you riding up and down the road with David Schultz and Dennis Condry? Oh, no, he no, no. Of it, Lance would not hear no of way, it, man. No way. No, that little Bill Dundee, you little freak, let me tell you something, Dundee. You run around here behind Jerry, Jerry, following him real close. Well, Condry and Schultz are going to get you something, boy. We're going to get you a set of turn signals. And Jerry, Jerry, we want you to hook them on your back, boy. And Dundee, whenever he goes to make a turn, he's going to flip a button if he turns right. He's going to flip another button if he turns left. Or you won't break your nose when he turns. All right. <laughs> All right, nothing. I ain't I'm through. I'm going to ask you one question at a time. I don't want to overload That's your mind, baby. I don't want to short, short circuit you. Now, who, every time you see Jay Jarrett, who do you see with him? Who do you see with him? Well, I'll tell you, you see Jimmy Bayett or little Billy Dundee, the little four-foot midget. That's who you see, man. Let me tell you something, baby. It's getting down to the nitty-gritty. We want championship matches, and we don't care what we have to do. If we have to knock the promotion, if we have to knock anybody, Daddy, we're going to get some championship matches. Good, Lance. One way or another. Good, Lance. That's what's wrong. Daddy, I'm going to tell you something, freak. You run out here with these 29 cent sunglasses, with your bleached blonde hair, you think you're a man, you ain't nothing, boy. You're a punk from the Big Apple, and if you mess with us, we'll send you back. And Dundee, we'll send you to Australia, and Jerry Gant, we'll break your neck. And Buddy Four, I know you're down there somewhere, one of these little hit that down. Watch it. I don't like you. I don't like the promotion. But Lance, see, I can do this, Daddy. Nobody can cut me off. I got money, Daddy. I can buy this television. If I want to, I can We're stars, Lance Russell. We're stars in the wrestling business today. Well, if we wasn't stars, if we wasn't stars, you wouldn't be seeing us on this TV right now. We're going to get some chances. We are stars. We're going to hurt somebody one. You hear me? I hear what you say. Okay. Don't let the stooges. You ain't so better. Are you listening out there? Yeah, they listen. We heard a lot of insults and not very much concrete about the plan. Insult. You come out here and just stand and insult Well, look people, at me. David. I, I can insult anybody I want to. I'm big enough. Hey, I got in this business to hurt people, Lance Russell, because I'm a beef freak. I love to hurt people. Now, how can I hurt people if they won't fuck us in the They ought to send in the Fort Bill of State Prison or something. They're fine. Dr. D and Mr. C, for whatever that was worth, uh, if you are looking for the best books, DVDs, and posters on classic wrestling nostalgia, then you want to visit crowbarpress.com. There are literally dozens of titles there, including biographies of the likes of Bruiser Brody, Ole Anderson, Ivan Koloff, and of course, Dick the Bruiser, as we have spoke about here on the Dave Dynasty Show. You want to visit crowbarpress.com for all of your classic wrestling nostalgia needs. Again, that is crowbarpress.com. 
Okay, and there you have it for another episode of the Dave Dynasty Show, the the slightly revamped Dave Dynasty Show. Uh, I'm going to dive into other things that I enjoy about the professional wrestling business, as I said before. Uh, we still have a very heavy emphasis on Midwest professional wrestling, but there are other things that I do enjoy. I love all kinds of old school territorial wrestling. I very much enjoy the new NWA. I'm enjoying parts of the AW, uh, AEW. Excuse me. Uh, I do like the AWA, but uh, I, I'm a huge fan of Lucha Libre wrestling. I enjoy uh, Puro from Japan and things like that. So we're going to explore some of these things. We're going to talk about some of these things. Uh, we're going to talk wrestling movies. We're going to talk wrestling shows. We're going to talk about all kinds of other things, stuff that I feel is good professional wrestling, real professional wrestling. And uh, then I'm going to probably put down and knock the crap I don't like. So. Uh, hopefully you're on board with that. And if we have a disagreement, don't worry about it. It's cool. Uh, let's let's discuss it, right? I'm a positive person. I like to put positivity back into pro wrestling. And I think we can have opinions and disagree about things and have discussions on them and, and not hate each other. Now, uh, there are people out there who I believe are so far gone about things that I do dislike them. But we, I don't think any of you listening to my show fall into that category. Uh, so we'll be back at some point with another episode. It might be a couple weeks. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, uh, obviously, with the state of the world. But do follow us on social media on all those platforms because I will be doing things on there, and I will be posting things and pictures and, uh, and video and different stuff so we can interact on there. But until next time, please be safe. Please stay inside. Please take this seriously. And I wish you all the best uh, in health and well-being. And make sure you be good, be safe, and keep on growing.